We have to evaluate this integral within the context of partial fractions, but at first glance it looks nothing like a typical partial fractions question. You look at the denominator, and usually in a partial fractions question your denominator will be the product of some factors, you know, a linear factor like x plus 1 or a quadratic factor like x squared minus 4, but we just don't seem to have that. The question gives us this vague hint. It says make a substitution, which is hardly helpful, but it will turn out that a substitution will save the day here. We're going to go ahead and let u equal the square root of x. And if we square both sides of that, we can see that u squared would equal just x. And then what we need to do is differentiate both sides of this with respect to x. So on the left side, we would have a power rule. We would put the power in front we would have 2 multiplied by u, but then because this is a chain rule, we would have to multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x, so that's just du dx. And then on the other side, the derivative of x with respect to x, of course, is just 1. Then we can multiply both sides of this little equation by dx, so that the dx cancels here on the left side. Now we can see that 2u du is equal to dx. So let's go back to the original problem. We have 10 times the integral. Now, the numerator has dx in it, but we just determined that dx is going to be 2u du, and then put this over our denominator. Now, x squared, well, we didn't pick up an x squared. Let's look at this equation here. Let's square both sides of this equation. If you square u squared, you'll have u to the fourth. If you square x, you'll have x squared. That shows us that our x squared is going to be u to the fourth plus our x, which looking back was u squared, times square root of x, and looking back that was just u. So now we'll simplify the denominator a little bit there. We're going to have u to the fourth plus u cubed. Let's factor out a u in the denominator so that if we factor it out, we'll have u cubed plus u squared. And what's rather convenient here is the u in the numerator and the u in the denominator cancel out. We can then multiply the 10 times the 2. So we'll have the integral of 20 over. Now, it's also going to be convenient to rewrite u cubed plus u squared by factoring out a u squared. So you have u squared times u plus 1 du. And we finally have it in a form in which partial fractions will be useful to us. We have linear factors right here as well as here. Notice this is not a quadratic factor. It's a linear factor because you're going to write it as u times u. That would be the product of identical linear factors. And then over here you have the linear factor u plus 1. And you have 20 up top here. So it's useful to think of it in those terms. Just take the u squared and write it as u times u. So now we have to do a partial fraction decomposition. So what we do is we take our expression that we're trying to integrate. And for a repeated linear factor, you're going to have to write that as a over u plus b over u squared. And then for a non-repeated or a distinct linear factor, you're just going to have c over the u plus 1. If the u plus 1 had been squared, for example, then that also would have been a repeated linear factor. So in that case, you would have done plus d over the linear factor squared like that. But that wasn't the case here. That's just a demonstration there. We don't have to go through with that. So there is our setup, and we have to now find a common denominator. So this needs to be multiplied by both a u and a u plus 1. This needs just a u plus 1. And then this denominator over here is missing the u squared. Once you have a common denominator, the easiest thing to do is to just cross it all off. Basically, you're multiplying each term by the common denominator. So now you're left with 20 equals u times u plus 1 times a plus b times u plus 1 plus c times u squared. And our goal is to find a, b, and c. And one little trick we can do here to find b is to let u equals 0. So what that means is you're going to plug 0 in for the u. Now if you look carefully, this whole term would go to 0 because you would have 0 plugged in right there, and 0 times the rest of it would be 0. So that would get knocked out. Same thing with this. If you plug 0 in, that would go to 0. So now 
you're left with 20 equals b times, and then if you put zero in for this u, it's zero plus one, which is just one, so it's b times one, and therefore you can see that b is equal to 20. So that was rather convenient. Then we can go back and we'll let u equal a different value, a strategically chosen value. What if we did u is equal to negative one? And the reason that's useful is because if you plug negative one in for this u here, as well as here, both of those will have a negative one plus one, which is zero. And so when you multiply that all out, that will go to zero. Same thing over here, that will go to zero. So that would leave you with just 20 equals c times negative one squared. And that would show us that c is also equal to 20. We don't yet have the value of a though, do we? So we still have a little bit of work ahead of us. Let's figure out a way to get the value of a. And I suppose really the only way to do that is to multiply things out a little bit at this point. So we'll have 20 equals, now we'll put this u in, so that'll give us u squared plus u times a, plus we'll put the b through, so we'll have b u plus b, and then plus c u squared. And then if we distributed this a right here, that would give us a squared, excuse me, that would give us a u squared plus a times u, and then we'd have the rest of it here. Notice on the left-hand side, we do not have a u squared term. So what we're gonna do is put in a, a zero u squared here. The reason you would do that is because then you can take the u squared term on the left side and equate it to the u squared terms on the right side. So what we've just highlighted there would become zero u squared equals a u squared plus c u squared. You're just equating u squared terms on each side. Divide everything by u squared so they cancel and now you have zero equals a plus c. And we have the value of c. It was found earlier to be 20, so we'll put that in. And then we can clearly see now that the a must equal negative 20. Okay, so now we go back to our original little expression here that we were trying to integrate. And we recall before we had found the common denominator that it kind of looked like this. And so now that we have all the values of a, b, and c, we're going to put them in. So why don't we do this? Why don't we take this, copy it, and kind of carry it with us down here. Remember that we were trying to integrate this with respect to u, so we might as well put the integral symbol back on. And so we can see that our integral now becomes our a, which was negative 20 over u, plus our b, and our b and c were both 20, right? So this will become plus 20 over u squared. This will become plus 20 over u plus one. And then times du. For a purist, we could probably factor out a 20. So we would have 20 times the integral of negative one over u plus, now this is gonna become one over u squared, but let's write that as u to the negative two and then this will become one over u plus one du. Most of these integrals are pretty simple at this point. The integral of negative one over u is negative natural log absolute value of u. This integral is just a power rule, so add one, so it becomes u to the negative one, but then you have to divide that by negative one, so you'll just have a minus u to the negative one. The third one, you could technically do a u substitution. Most of us know a little bit of a shortcut for this one. We'll run through the u sub real quickly though. If you, well, actually we don't wanna use u sub, we'll use w substitution. If you let w equal u plus one, then you would have dw is equal to du. That would become the integral of one over your w with respect to w, and that gives you the natural log of the absolute value of your w. And then since your w was u plus one, you get ln absolute value of u plus one. A lot of us know the shortcut without having to go through that. So you would have the natural log absolute value of u plus one, close it off, and then you have to include your constant of integration. But don't forget that u, going all the way back to the original substitution that we had made, where is it? Ah, yes, u was the square root of x. So in fact, you gotta make sure you replace those u's with square root x. So you'll have 20 times negative ln absolute value square root of x 
minus, we could rewrite this as one over our u like that, and then plus the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of x plus one. Close it off, include your constant of integration, and there is your answer.